I'm going to try to set up this um, this wet sandblaster that I got cheap on Amazon for around 30 bucks or so, 32, something like that. It's got a um, tip on a little bit bigger than my pot blaster, and uh, I think this will um, will work better. I couldn't use the sand. This this heavy grit sand. It's got some uh, white sand mixed in with it because that's what was in the pot blaster when I was running out. And it, um, the white sand works in the pot blaster, but this black sand that I threw on top of it is too big and it, it clogs the thing up. And so I wasn't making any progress because of that. But I got this black sand that uh, somebody gave me who uh, borrowed my sand blaster and they gave me this, what was left over apparently they couldn't use it either but uh, anyway this has a bigger orifice in it so it probably will pass I hope but there's no air pressure on it only well I guess in a way it does because it's going to have the pressure from the sand blaster is going to I mean from the water um, uh, pressure washer is going to be going out at such a speed it's going to draw a vacuum from here and I saw in other YouTube videos that they said you have to hold this uh, siphon side up when you're using it or water bleeds back into it and gets your sand wet and then the sand clogs up won't come out. So anyway, this is all set up. It came with clamps, but I'm not going to use them because there's just vacuum on here. There's no pressure to push those off, so there's no point in putting clamps on it. I just shove the hoses on there. They, they do fit on snug on the ends of this and on this siphon wand that goes in here so apparently this one here is there to offer a little bit of air to help um, get the stuff out of there so let's see what happens I'm gonna set this up and uh, probably better go get another lid there's going to be because I don't want water getting in this one so anyway I'll go get another lid put on here put one of these drums down here get the pressure washer going pressure washer wand just plugs into the back of this uh, and if I have any kind of luck at all with this then I'm gonna be trying to find one that works on a 3 8 commercial grade pressure washer because I have one of those that's going to put out a lot more water and a lot more pressure. This one from Northern Tools claims 3,000. Well, you know how that is. We'll be lucky to get 2,000 out of it. But this is a good pressure washer, and I've been using it for a couple years, cleaning the truck and stuff, and I really like it. It's, it's great for um, you know not having a gas motor that you have to deal with carburetors and stuff draining gas tanks and deal with all that so anyway let's get set up and uh, see what we got here I wanted to use this longer wand about maybe three feet long that comes comes with the machine but for whatever reason even after spraying WD-40 in there I, I can't plug this into it but it does plug in to this little short one and um, I'm going to use that I'll just have to stand closer and get wetter but um, I'll take this over in the shop and find out why it won't go in there I'm ready for my first try at this I have the pressure washer bled out the air bled out of it and I'm ready to plug in the wand and see what we got. And I do have a little bit of eye protection on my glasses plus this mask.
yeah, we got a winner here, so um, I'm not going to re record any more blasting because, as you can plainly see, I got this I got this crap all over my hands. As you can plainly see, this stuff is doing it. These drums are now well. I mean, I got to finish it, but yeah, it's 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 working real good. Okay, I finished two drums. Probably took me 15 minutes a piece um, of the actual work itself, not prep and clean up and everything. That drum is already rinsed off and drying. It's going to have a thin coat of rust on it, but that's fine. That's, that doesn't hurt anything. That'll wipe right off with a Scotch Brite or something. Um, the downside that I found is really minimal and it's well worth having the, the, the setup. The only downside is it does use an awful lot of media, uses it fast, so you got to have a place to collect that. It's good to have a tarp uh, set up and a mud flap to put your parts on because it, the sand might actually go through the tarp if you're just having only that as a backup and try to do it when you're going to have warm weather so you can uh, scoop this stuff up and spread it out on a tarp on a hot sunny day take a broom and work it and because you want to reuse this you don't want to throw all this away okay so I did mine on the gravel and um, I mean on the the rock and I'm gonna lose a lot of it but uh, I am gonna gather up as much as I can save it and when I have an opportunity weatherwise to dry it out and uh, run it through a screen and save it, I'm going to do that. So that is the one downside I use is a lot of media, a lot more than the pressure pot does, maybe three times more, two or three times more. And the other downside is that it's a sloppy mess on you, but you have no dust. You don't have to wear breathing equipment or have a fan running behind you or something like that in order to, to do this like you do with a with the uh, dry sand blast so I think that is the the, the most of uh, of my take on this and I really like it definitely by all means if it works with a small electric sand blast I mean what uh, water pressure blaster water what do you call these things it works great with that I mean, you can get these that are just cheap little Chinese $100 toys that are no good. But uh, this this one, I don't know, I paid maybe $500 for it. I don't remember. And I've been getting a lot of good service out of it for a couple of years. So it beats setting up one with gasoline and having to deal with getting the gas out of it when you're not using it. Because if you don't use it every day, I mean, on a regular basis, your gasoline will screw up your carburetor. So anyway, that's that's my take on it. It is messy but uh, it's well worth it.